lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. So sorry about last week, everybody. We tried. We yeah. tried over and over we and over We had tried again. multiple times. Yeah, it was just it was just not in the cards, man. Yeah, it didn't happen. No, I'm not going to make any pronouncements about <laughs> future recordings yeah. today. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we can do something. We're, we're going to make an attempt. No promises, though, like Mike says. Yeah. So we, we won't say any more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Try to make it up. Maybe we will. Maybe we Maybe won't. Maybe we will. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but this has been a better year. I remember when we got the uh, communications award from the Libertarian Party of Alabama yeah. um, for the podcast, and all, all I could think when I when we went up there to accept the reward and um, and I, I had to stand in front of the mic was uh, she said that we recorded thirty nine podcasts last year. That means we list we missed literally a quarter of the weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? There's fifty two weeks in the year, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> so we missed. Missed a few. Yeah. Um, but I think doing we've better. done, yeah. I think yeah we've definitely done better. doing better. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully we can keep that up. I did have a lot of people message and ask about missing the podcast. So, yeah. so there's, some, there's some people out there that missed us. Okay. So, so we're here. Yeah. We're here now. We're back, baby. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, so uh, earlier this week would have been my parents' 53rd wedding anniversary oh, that's right. um if uh, dad hadn't died a year and a half ago so um so we went out to dinner with my mom yeah. uh, on tuesday at liberty larry and his family and yeah. and I. um and i like i guess to start with i just have to say like she you know she's moving around on a walker and so forth which i did not think was going to happen yeah um no i mean i've i've been over there uh, quite a bit now and uh, she's getting around great man yeah like I'm seriously like majorly impressed. Yeah, like, I I really like a year ago or less than a year ago. I really thought at best wheelchair bound. Yeah. For the rest of her life, and yeah, it's not turned out that way, and just, it's fantastic. Just goes to show perseverance, man. Like I mean, if you put your mind to doing something, you can do it, man. Yeah. So um, last night, well, because I didn't know if we were going to end up going out on Tuesday, so I bought. Uh, Steak pinwheels. The pinwheels. You were talking about those the other night. Yeah. yeah. So I bought steak pinwheels and um, potatoes and salad. Um, and so I went over there last night and made the steak pinwheels. And I, I cooked them differently than I did the first time that I tried to cook them. And they were good, but it didn't really turn out how I wanted the first time. Oh, yeah. Last night, perfect, man. Nice. They were perfect. <laughs> they were so good. So nailed that. Got to write it down. In <laughs> yeah. fact, I, I'll, let me say it out loud. So at least it's on the podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. So I did, I did a cast iron pan, yeah. um, preheated to 350 in the oven, and cooked it for 25 minutes. Oh, cool. That's, that's A little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan, of course. You know. That's the recipe, right? That's the recipe. I should have like added a little marinade to them before I put them in there, but they came out great anyway. Yeah. Um, but, they, you know, they could have had a little bit more flavor. Oh yeah, you can always have more flavor. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was it. It it worked out like the cheese was cooked, but it didn't it didn't melt out of the pinwheel and it uh, yeah. anyway. So Very there cool. you go. That that's my recommendation to everybody <laughs> if you make uh steak pinwheels. Yeah. It's three fifty in a cast iron um pan yeah. in the oven for twenty five minutes. That's, that'll do it. And now I have a, a recording for ever, <laughs> and so I won't have to write that down. Yeah. You can always come refer back to this <laughs> yeah. podcast. I just, I just have to remember episode. which one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's yeah. only 130-something, so yeah. or somewhere around in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, so, but it was a good week. We had dinner twice, and it was nice. No, oh, very cool. Yeah. Watch any of the big trial going on. Johnny Depp than the man the her. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> I, I I could not care less. Oh man, you're missing out, man. I've uh, been watching it. It's a it's a shit show, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's been it's been entertaining. I wasn't paying attention at first, and now I got sucked in, man. It's yeah, just one of those things that sucks you in. Yeah, I could not care less. <laughs> um, Figured you might feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a distraction. There's real news going on. It is a distraction. Hey, I'll, I'm right there with you. It's absolutely a distraction. But it's it's a 
entertaining one. Yeah. I've found it entertaining. <laughs> okay. so. well, you may as well watch the soap operas in the middle of the day. Or hey, exactly. Um, or uh, read, what is it, E <laughs> Magazine? Is that a magazine or is that just a TV Dude, show? I, or is that a channel? I don't even know. It used to be a channel. I don't know if it still is or not. Wow. Man, Court TV, man. I got Court TV at my house. We'd be, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's all that's on is coverage of the trial. And if it's not coverage of the trial, it's people talking about the trial. That's all that's on that channel right now. <laughs> okay. It's well, whole, I mean, there's other kind of like uh, interesting legal things. You would think so, <laughs> but it's not on the Court TV. This <sighs> is it. <sighs> well, um, all right. So uh, last episode, you brought up the Elon Musk buying Twitter thing. And I was yep. like, eh, you know. I don't think it's you, you, it, it became news. Yeah, it definitely became um, news. The, the reaction from Twitter made me far more interested in yeah. this when they tried to just dilute away their stock and it, um, right. and so forth, which is a terrible mo- business move. Isn't that the poison pill? Is yeah. that the, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it just, uh, it dilutes the amount of stock that he would have, but it also reduces the value of the stock. Yeah. Um, well, and, that, that can't be something that the shareholders would be in favor of. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's not good for them. Well, and there became the question about whether um, the board would be uh, neglecting their fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders by doing that and uh, oh, yeah. um, and by refusing the offer. And by offer. refusing the offer because, I mean, he made them a, a nice offer, you yeah. know. Um, so, uh, but that's all done. Now. Yeah. I mean, over the weekend, uh, that all kind of settled out. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, so Elon, Elon Musk, Musk is the proud owner of a Twitter. <laughs> well, it the Twitter will be in about six months, I guess. I like guess it, so, before yeah. everything's finalized. But yeah. um, I can only imagine like the. I, I think back to Enron when they were destroying all the documents. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going on inside Twitter right now? Like, I, there there has to be stuff that they're trying to dispose of and get rid of. Yeah. So it's not seen whenever. Tw- um, Elon and Musk and his people take over because yeah. Musk isn't going to be like in there itself, but he'll have people in there that's going to run this and do this for him. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure there's stuff they're trying to get rid of and destroy right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard from uh, some libertarian and uh, conservative voices that they suddenly picked up a whole lot of followers. Yeah. Um, while uh, on the left, I'm hearing that they they're they've lost a, lost bunch, of a bunch of followers. I've heard so, the same thing. Like the bots have disappeared, and people are finding the the These people that have been kind of yeah. shadow banned or whatever was going on. Oh, absolutely. Um, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, we know that that was going on. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not really a. I mean, it's a pretty open secret. You yeah. Know? So, um, yeah, it, but it's interesting that he hasn't even taken over yet, and these changes are already starting to happen, which makes you wonder what they were doing and what kind of stuff they would be trying to hide. You know. Yeah. The, well, I mean, the other side of that is that uh, you know you've got a new boss coming in, and you know what that boss wants. Yeah. Well, that's true, too. Maybe you just kind of want to keep your job. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of that going on, but I think there's a lot of people on the other side of that that just don't care anything at all about keeping their job, and they're trying to muck the gears up, too. Well, yeah, that could be. So, um, I mean, I think he ought to just fire everybody. and. Um, I figure that's what he'll do. <laughs> I don't think he will. You don't think but, so? No, I don't think he will. But um, but we'll see. Uh, I, I mean, I think that it's. I, I think that this is a good thing, and I I am. Well, I'm excited amazed. about the future of. I mean, I'm so I'm, like I said before, I'm not on Twitter, but I'm gonna start me account pretty soon here. Yeah. And get on there. Um, I am amazed at the outcry from the left about this. <laughs> uh, that uh, oh no, what if um this free speech absolutist steps into Twitter and takes control? How terrible will that be? When historically. Like the left was the ones in favor of of free well, expression. Yeah, it, and, you, of course they were in favor of it when when they wanted it to be equal. But the the tables have been turned now, and mm-hmm. they've they've had the ability to completely shut down the other side, yeah. and they don't want to give that up. Well, and that's that becomes the question about Elon Musk. Um, like I hope that he is really a free speech absolutist and yeah. steps in there and just lets everybody have their say. Um, 
there is, of course, the concern that uh, everybody's in favor of free speech as long as their opinion is the one that's out there. Yeah. Um, they're only in favor of free speech for those that support their position. Yeah. Um, that's obviously what the left is doing right now is that they're yeah. only in favor of free speech as long as it's their position that's being expressed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll just have to see if if Musk is the same way or is actually principled about this. Well, he's, yeah. he's said plenty of times that, that he wants everybody to, he doesn't want the left to leave, that he doesn't mm -hmm. want these people to leave Twitter, that he wants every, he wants it to truly be open and free. Yeah. Now we'll see. We, there's no way to know if it, that's really what he's going to do with it mm -hmm. till it happens. Yeah, um, the EU has already gone after him and said, uh, you know, we have laws here about this stuff and you better comply and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. To which he already responded, free speech to me is in compliance with the law. Yeah. Um, and that the problem is that the, the uh, platform has overstepped the legal limits on free speech and, and yeah. um, just like imposed its own ideology yeah. on its ideas of what should be free to be spoken about. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It'll we'll be see. interesting to see how it plays out and interesting to see what they can really do about it. If they don't agree with what, with the way the platform's being ran. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess there's actions they can take, but it's a weird thing. Like, do they shut Twitter down? Do they block it? Like, what do they, yeah. how, or do they force levy something against the company or Musk himself? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, what do you do? Like, well, I mean, you know, the EU could just block Twitter from the internet in the, in the block. Yeah. Uh, potentially, um, which that would be real interesting. That I think it'd be interesting to see how that uh, plays out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's just, it's very revealing how uh, people have reacted to this, um, that the that the left is, is so concerned about people being able to express their opinions. Yeah. Um, it's, and it, it, I think it's also interesting that the right is, is so on board with it, so excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I get why they're excited because I'm excited for the same reason. Like, I yeah. mean, if if Musk do, truly does what he says he's going to do, I mean, this is a game changer. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a game changer for both sides. I mean, it's it's obviously a good thing for the right, mm -hmm. but it's basically going to put the right and left on a level playing field, at least on this platform. We'll see. Maybe. But, I, mean, I mean, potentially. That's the idea. Though, potentially. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, now we don't know that that's going to happen, but mm -hmm. I mean, I I I take Musk at his word that that's what he's going to do with this platform yeah um and that only reason i take him is because he's talked about these type of things for a long time yeah like this isn't something that he just like all of a sudden came up with he's talked about free speech and the importance of free speech for a long time yeah so i also know. think it's funny that musk has been a hero of the left for a long time right up until now <laughs> yeah yeah it, well that's yeah it, that's that's very true too yeah. you know a lot of, uh, that tesla money is what bought twitter <laughs> you know? yeah exactly <laughs> um so I, I saw when i was over at mom's last night uh at um eating dinner um she had i don't know some news channel on uh and there was a republican i think senator um from louisiana something kennedy uh on she said she really likes that he's funny yeah. um and he was talking about this uh, free speech thing and um, how Americans should be free to, uh, you know, decide what to believe on their own. They should be trusted to make their own choices uh, about what to, to trust and so on. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought that that was, I, if I had been in front of him, what I would have asked is, so do you think then that YouTube should let me watch Russia today again? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I wonder if you're saying this from a principled position or if this is just a political yeah. issue. And the you. truth is, is, it's probably just a political. Like, he yeah. probably wouldn't. It's 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 a weird thing. No, we can't have that Russian disinformation in this country. It might have been the response. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and maybe you know, not. Like, yeah. maybe he is principled with it. But a lot of times that's not the case. You yeah. Know. I wouldn't expect it to be. No. I um, that my... my uh, my perception of politicians at this point is that there's very few of them that have any real principle. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this is kind of going, actually, this is really, um, fully illustrated with what's going on with Disney in Florida. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know, okay, so let's play this clip from uh this is a, a Florida representative, I think. State state representative. Okay. Um he may be state senate, but I think he's a state representative. Uh Spencer Roach. I really should write down people's titles, right? <laughs> um anyway, uh this is him kind of describing the situation and um also uh you know, making um his his principal points about it and yeah. We'll just see how principled they are. <laughs> All right. Let's take right. a listen. So here he is. Well, Disney has and has had for almost 60 years a very special relationship with Florida. They have uh, what I refer to as Florida's 68th county. It's about 43 square miles. It's called the Reedy Creek Improvement District. And they essentially are their, they are their own government. They're exempt from all county regulation and most state regulations. Legally, under the law, Disney could build a nuclear power plant there, and we couldn't do a darn thing about it. And look, my objection to this, you know, I know it seems retaliatory, but I would describe it more as opportunistic. Disney's weakened politically. We should go after this. But, but my principal objection to this as a conservative free marketeer, it's anti-free market. I mean, you have all these other theme parks in Florida. You have uh, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Legoland, Busch Gardens. And here in the district that I represent, you have a theme park. It's the largest single-site employer in my district. It's called the Shell Factory. They'd love to have their own government there, but I, they don't have that. Why should Disney get this special privilege and no one else should have that. I think it's just an aberration of the free market. And let me tell you what else Disney's doing. So they're expanding out of their traditional role of sort of theme park amusement. They're now building a $400 million movie studio there. They're building a fourth Disney hotel. They're building a $300 million office space. And they don't have to apply with any of the regulatory burdens that any other realtor, business developer, or builder would have to comply to. They have an enormous advantage uh, over the rest of the market. It's unfair. It's anti-free uh, market. It's anti-economic liberty. It's wrong. Okay. Um, I do like that he addressed the accusation that this is retaliatory. And while I'm not entirely convinced that it's not retaliatory, yeah. um, he does make a good point that, uh, that it's just politically opportunistic. It um, is. That uh, Disney has upset some people, and so they don't have as much support in the state as they historically have and so this is an opportunity to uh bring uh you know take away this special privilege that they've had for a lot of a long time that probably a lot of people are in favor of getting rid of yeah um and i suspect that it means a, a fair bit of revenue for the state uh being able to charge additional taxes and, and oh so i'm forth. sure yeah. um so that that there's there's a ring of truth to that yeah um now, in terms of his principle, like he says, I'm a free marketeer, and so um, that's why I want to take away these special privileges. Uh, but the answer, if you're a free marketeer, isn't to take away the special privileges from Disney. It's to stop taxing and regulating everybody else. Yeah. All of those other theme parks that he listed off there that would mm -hmm. love to have that same privilege that Disney has – should also have those privileges. Like yeah. that's a free marketeer's answer to that. Exactly. Not let's um, take it away from Disney. Yeah. Like, um, and like I say, I mean, I think, I think everybody at the minimum, if you're going to have government, which obviously I'm not in favor of this type of big government, mm -hmm. but um, even if you're going to make an argument for that, it should still be everybody playing on a level playing field. Yeah, the the rules should apply to everybody equally. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And this is a better answer than than Disney having these special privileges and nobody else having the special privileges. Yeah, but you know my the, position. The free, the free marketeer market position, answer though is to give that privilege to everybody. Yeah, and th that's that what I would want. That it shouldn't like, be a privilege; it should just be the expectation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But, uh, you know, th that's not going to happen. But that's certainly uh, opposed to the Republican principle yeah. uh, of uh, free markets is that, no, what we needs to happen is that we need to tax this company more and yeah. we need to go in and regulate them more. That is not a Republican <laughs> position. No. That is not a conservative position. Not traditional. Sure yeah. It's not a free market position. Oh, it's not a free market position for sure. Um, now, at the same time, uh, on this legislation to take away these special privileges, uh, all the Democrats voted against it. Yeah. Um, now, the Democrats are the ones that are in favor of regulating all of shouldn't, these industries, and everybody should be paying their fair I was share of taxes. To say, shouldn't Disney be paying their fair share? Like, yeah. I don't feel like we're getting fair share from them now. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and uh, they're a court now. 
while the Republican is actually, he's not making a free market argument, he's making an uh, egalitarian argument. Yeah. Um, the Democrats have thrown, totally thrown out egalitarianism in this regard. Yeah. Uh, their, their position is that everybody should be equal, but that's not what they're advocating for in this case at all. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so my point here isn't that one side's right or one side's wrong necessarily. Uh, my point here is that um, that they're both being hypocritical. Both sides have abandoned their principles yeah. in this fight. Or illustrated that they don't actually have any principles in well, the first place. The truth is, is that they don't have any principles. But, I mean, th this makes it painfully obvious. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so <laughs> I, I just think that this is a good illustration of what the, that these political parties are purely political. They're not principled. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that they have, you know, abandoned whatever principle they may have once had. Um, and the reason that the Democrats are supporting Disney here is not because of their, uh, you know, egalitarian principles, um, or that they, or their liberal principles of, you know, people being, or businesses being, yeah. being free to make their own choices or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's, is this is not something that, that is based on, um, on, you know, individual rights or, uh, or liberty or anything like that. It's the, Disney is a powerful push to their their political position. Yeah, exactly. And the the opposite is true on the Republican side. Um, the Republicans aren't supporting their small government. Uh, don't interfere with the market position. They're opposed to Disney on this and want to interfere in the market because Disney has a political position that's that's counter to the the conservative or Republican position right now. Yeah. And, and I shouldn't even say the conservative or Republican position, but at least how they perceive their voters yeah. um, feeling about these issues. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I guess that's really all the point that I had <laughs> well, to make about the, that. It, but. it is crazy to me because um, I had saw, or you had, I think you had played the clip earlier before we started recording that, um, that all of the Democrats crats voted against this. Yes. Um, and it just blows my mind that you could have one hundred. That there's not any principled Democrats there. Yeah, that would like, say that these people should be paying. This is one of the richest companies in the world. Yeah. They should be paying taxes. You would like think everybody there would else. at least yeah. be a, a at least within their caucus, like mm -hmm. our uh, party, would be some kind of debate about that yeah. or talk about that. And somebody mm -hmm. that would be like, oh well, I'm not gonna, I can't vote for this. Blah blah blah. Yeah, there's not. Like that's just crazy to me. The, yeah. just the whole we, thought that they were that in lockstep mm -hmm. with this with this vote that goes completely against their principles. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, you know, the, somebody to say, Hey, don't we advocate that, um, that unregulated business is bad yeah. that we can't trust, uh, you know, the free market to, um, have businesses make the right decisions that we need to regulate all these big businesses. No. Yeah. Okay. That's, that, that's just yeah. crazy to me. That, that blows my mind that there wasn't any that was that, you know, at least felt strongly enough about it to vote the other way. Yeah. You know? um, and then to uh, kind of circle us back to uh, the social media thing, um, you had brought up a story about Tyson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I don't really know the background on this, but it, I, I think it leads to some interesting discussion about social media. So you want to give us a background? Yeah. On so um, I guess it was last week now. Um mm -hmm. So there was, so I watched the video from it now. So I don't know if I'd seen the video when we, when I mentioned it before, maybe I had, I don't remember. But anyway, um, a guy was like harassing Mike Tyson on an airplane mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, like legit harassing the guy, like hollering at him. And he was in the seat in front of Tyson and he's just hollering at him and the whole nine yards. And, um, you, you what? I think he was behind Tyson. Actually. Oh, was he behind Tyson? Yeah, I think maybe. so. Maybe. The, sure, the angle like, was weird when, on the video I watched, so maybe it was. Yeah. I only saw a still, but it looked to me that Tyson was turned around in his seat. like Maybe. Like reaching over the top of his seat. Either way, guy, but. he goes to town on this guy <laughs> yeah. eventually after putting up with a fair amount of harassment from him, finally yeah. decides he's going to take care of it. Yeah. And, um... I don't know. It's just, it's the point, the, the thing that I thought was the funniest about it. And Tyson has said this before. I don't know, know if he said mm -hmm. it in reference to this, mm -hmm. but is that, you know, people on social media get all, are all willing to harass and talk 
um, crap to somebody. But Mm -hmm. when you actually are in front of somebody, it's a different world then. Like when somebody can reach out and touch you, it's a different situation. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that anymore. That's being lost in society. Tyson did say something years ago about that uh, social media has made people complacent I, no, I, I, I can't remember the words, quote, but, yeah. Um, social media has made people complacent, and they forget that, um, that uh, you know, talking trash to somebody could result in getting punched in the mouth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then this happened. And then this happened, which is, yeah, kind um, of coincidental. And, and that is the, the point to make, is that the, the reason that people are, are so toxic on social media, or can be so toxic on social media, there's um, is that... There's the anonymity um, and the physical separation. Yeah. There's no real consequence to being yeah. rude. Yeah. Um, whereas, uh, you know, there are things that if you say it to somebody's face, I'm not advocating for the violence, but there are things like. But it can happen. To, <laughs> yeah. But you have to measure the possibility that if you say, if you step over the line with somebody, if you, if you uh, finally say the thing that really pushes their button. Yeah. that they may punch you in the face. Especially when you're dealing with what could potentially be a crazy person. And you don't know, and, and I see this a lot Well, and that, public. and then Mike Tyson particularly, yeah. is one of the hardest punchers, maybe the, the hardest, hardest puncher <laughs> in the history of heavyweight boxers. Right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, and I don't mean the crazy person in really that much. I mean, I, obviously we're talking about Tyson, so I can't discount that. But I mean, just in general, you don't really know when you antagonize antagonize somebody in public mm-hmm. who you're antagonizing yeah and i see this fair not all the time but fairly often i work with the public mm-hmm. and i see this where people are a mess with people and, and do stuff like this and it's mm-hmm. like man like you don't know this person like they may they could do all kind i mean you yeah. just don't know yeah and it's it is a weird thing and i do mm-hmm. think social media has a lot to do with that that yeah. people forget that you know, and and when that you're, you can't in real life talk to people like exactly, this. exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I th- that I, I thought that was funny when you told me about that, and I went and yeah. looked it up. Yeah. Um. So the other, this is kind of this is another one of those potpourri podcasts where we're just kind we're of just going ahead a bunch of, of stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, we've a missed a lot of news the past week or so. Yeah. <laughs> we missed the podcast. Yeah, there was something else that I wanted to talk about that now I completely forget what it was. It's just so it's like, well, how in the world did we never bring this up? And now it's 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 yeah. old news now. Yeah. And it's so old that I can't remember what that it was. You don't even know. That. You I can't even made, remember yeah, what it is. I never yeah. made a note about it. Obviously, so I, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, another one of these kind of cracks in the um, the I don't know liberal um, prevalence in the co- culture wars, I guess. Yeah. Um, is the the CNN Plus? Oh, thing. CNN Plus. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. Uh, the you know, other than they they put. Th- 300 million, well, it depends on the reports. I've heard half a billion even. But oh, wow. um, uh, 300 million um, into CNN Plus, and it, they... It uh, lasted, what, a week? A month, about. A month, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> a little it? less than a month. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there there was a, a response. To, I don't know. To me, like, I, I was reading the story, and I thought, well, this is obviously what this is, because they put... I mean, imagine if we had three hundred million dollars to oh, spend dude. on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. Like that's right. Well, and that that's kind of the point, though, is that they don't understand what kind of con- what content that people are willing to pay for, mm-hmm. because what they just assumed is that the content that they're already putting out was good enough that people would be willing to buy it. Yeah, and that's just not the case. Like, yeah, it's. Well, yeah. So the the idea, I guess, was well, there's all these streaming platforms that are doing really well, and, you know, all these podcasts and so forth that are that are streaming that are doing really well. So, yeah. what what do we need to do to compete? We'll just outspend them, and we'll put our content in the same kind of place where you can stream it and yeah. so forth. And that'll that's all we need. The problem is, is nobody wants their content. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that is the problem. Like their content is nothing but propaganda, and people know that. Yeah. So they're not going to pay for it. Like, why would you do that? And I looked at that and I thought, this is just proof that they're really like a government organization, essentially. Yeah. That they believe that the problem, uh, like they looked at 
CNN the channel and said, why are we failing? Yeah. And the response that they came up with for themselves was, well, we're just obviously not spending enough money on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> if we just spend more money, we'll do better. Yeah. And that's that's like such a government That's a answer government reaction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. yeah. This this program didn't work because it was underfunded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. That's always the, the fight, you know. Yeah. And then of course, you know, in government, um, you're incentivized to fail because the worse you fail, the more money you get more to you try get. and improve your program. Exactly. But, you know. Because the assumption is it's failing because you didn't spend enough. Yeah, absolutely. But the deal with CNN Plus is interesting because just like what you, where you were kind of going a second ago, just think if me or you had that money to mm -hmm. spend on content, yeah. like the kind of stuff we could put together and the kind of resources you would have to put something that people would be interested in watching out there. Yeah. Because there's stuff, there's plenty of stuff you could do and plenty of stuff that CNN could do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with those kind of resources and the kind of connections that they have, yeah, they could absolutely. put together some serious debates yeah. or something like that between some people that would be interesting. The problem is, mm -hmm. is that their side would lose those debates and they, yeah. would, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't even know that that's necessarily true, but they're unwilling to compromise the narrative in any way to, yeah. to give the, the possibility yeah. that um, they may be outcompeted, like that their idea or that their position may be outcompeted by somebody else. Yeah. Um, they're not in the business of actually providing you news. They're in the business of telling you a story that they expect you to believe. Yeah. And it's, the the idea that there would be another side to that um, never enters the conversation yeah. to them. Yeah. Because that's not the point. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's why the independent media does better. Oh, absolutely. Um, like even Fox uh, will at least have Democrats and libertarians on. I haven't watched Fox in a long time now, so I can't really speak to what's going on on that station currently. Yeah. But there, years ago, I watched Fox a lot and actually felt like I got a lot from it because mm -hmm. just like what you're saying, I mean, sure, it was absolutely slanted one direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. They put like, those it the was alternate slanted. voices at a disadvantage. Yeah, but the, they were there, though. Yeah. And, and just like you say, like liberals and Democrats or um, libertarians even, I mean, they had a seat at the table in most conversations mm -hmm. that were there. And, um, you know, I mean, it was – I always enjoyed watching Fox. But, yeah. you know, I haven't in years now, but – I don't even have regular TV. <laughs> well, I don't have regular TV anymore either. So that's I, the reason. I don't really do news that way. Yeah. Um, I read. I don't. A lot, so. Well, I, I watch a lot of. I watch a fair amount of news, but. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I don't, of course, there's podcasts. Yeah, I, and I consume podcasts and stuff like that too. And I get a lot of my news at this point from foreign sources, mm -hmm. France 24, you know, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. When I do video news, it's it's international yeah. news. Yeah. Um, and and a big reason for that, and why I'm upset about not having RT anymore, yeah. um, is that they, it, you get a very different perspective when you have foreign countries talking about um, activities of the U.S. and the international sphere. Oh, absolutely. Um, first off, you hear a lot of things that you would never, ever hear from the American <laughs> press. It's true. About what the U.S. is doing in the international sphere. Yeah. But even on the issues where the the U.S. press is also talking about it, you get a very different perspective from a, a foreign yeah. um, news source. And I appreciate that. Even, even an allied foreign news source like yeah. France 24. Yeah. And, and France 24, like a lot of their stuff is just you know, lifted right out of the New York times. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, but you have different personalities still, on there talking about it. That yeah. Looking at it from a different outlook than what, you mm -hmm. know, they look at it from in this country. Right. You know? Um, because they're not just propagandizing for the U S government. Exactly. <laughs> um, or the defense contractors or whatever. Yeah. Um, although I, you know, I did see a little bit on France 24 the other day. Um, Oh gosh, what was the Glo uh, GlobeSec was the name of the organization, which I assume is some kind of global security organization. Oh, sure. Um, the uh, where they were talking to him about the uh, war in Ukraine, and his position was that there was no point in trying to negotiate. Oh really? <laughs> that the only way that this was going to end 
Um, and in fact, he didn't even say the only way this was going to end is from a military victory from one side or the other. He said the only way that this was going to end was a military victory for Ukraine. Oh, really? And that that's why we should be pumping a bunch of money and into weapons Ukraine. into Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a vastly different opinion on this. <laughs> yes, yeah, we do. Um, and I, I do appreciate there's a, a one of the guys in the early morning, and I can't think of his name right now. Um, I, I think he's uh, he's Persian, maybe, or uh, Indian, or some you know, yeah. uh, some some kind of um, Southwest Asia, anyway, um, ethnic background, and uh, he. He was giving him some pushback, and he's actually one of my favorite presenters on France 24 because he, he seems, pushes back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the guy just you know ignored the questions and, and <laughs> kept yeah. to his talking points and and about how we need to support Ukraine and the only way that, that, that there's no sense in trying to negotiate with the Russians and the blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, this attitude really bothers me. Um, and it, and it's the attitude that our State Department has taken, as well as our Defense Department in this country, that there's they're not. I guess what it expressed more than anything is that the the West is not negotiating it, the the claimed attempts at negotiation that the West is doing with Russia and Ukraine yeah. um, are not done in good faith. No, absolutely uh, not. They have no intentions of coming to a an agreement. Nope. Um, they don't think that an agreement can be had. Um, and so they're not negotiating in good faith at all. And, uh, of course that just means that the war will last longer and be more destructive. Yeah. And the goal for everybody involved should be to end the war as quickly as possible yeah. to limit the destruction and the death. Absolutely. And if the, if Ukraine has to give up some stuff, so be it. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I don't see what the problem would be with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I mean, I think that there is enough evidence that uh, that Russia is not the threat yeah. that we thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, or that or the claims that were made anyway. Yeah. Now, it, it shouldn't be a huge surprise since they spend less than a tenth on their defense that as just the United States spends. Yeah. Um, that the United States spends uh, about a trillion dollars in defense and the whole entire GDP of Russia is only a trillion and a half. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the entire GDP of Russia is only a trillion and a half. And they oh, yeah. spend something like, um, uh, what was it? Um, like... 80 million or something, I think it was, on on their military a, heard, a year or yeah. something like that. I heard something like that. I can't remember the specific number, but it was in that ballpark. Yeah. yeah. Um, or a billion, I mean. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. not million. Yeah. Um, 80 billion. And that's nothing. Yeah. For, for us. On, on yeah. a U.S. standard. Yeah. Um, of course, I, I saw another report just recently that uh, the world spent over $2 trillion on defense for the first... And I, I love that they keep using the word defense there when that's not really the case. Yeah. Um, it's offense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the world spent $2 trillion on military yeah. um, in the last year, which for the first time has ever gone over $2 trillion. Yeah. And that almost 40% of that was just the U.S. Yeah. So... Yeah. We spend almost as much money on our military as the entire rest of the world. Well, and so I've heard this a lot, that talking about mm -hmm. Elon Musk, what he could have done with the money he spent to buy Twitter. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, buying Twitter with it, he could have helped all of these people and all of these groups. Mm -hmm. What about the U.S. and its military spending? Yeah. Like, I mean... That's in the same category as, like, think about what that money could do. Even just mm -hmm. a portion of that money could do for any, I mean, name your thing, you know. How about if it just stayed in our pockets? Well, that would be the preferable thing. Yeah. <laughs> but even, but, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's options there. Like, we don't mm -hmm. need to spend this money because, just like you're saying, it would be different if I actually believed it was for defense. Like, yeah. I mean, because I want to defend our country. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want somebody to come in here and roll us. Yeah. But um, but just like what we're saying, it's not defense. It's military, and it's offensive military, yeah. especially for us. Like, yeah. I well, mean, and that's the interesting point there is that uh, I was listening to Scott Horton interviewed William Arkin uh, from Arkin? That seems right. Yeah. From Newsweek. Yeah. And uh, he was saying one of the things that the, – now – He's good on a lot of things about this war. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that he said there that stood out to me is he said, well, you know, this is 
this has displayed to the world, Russia's pr- propensity for uh, military involvement and invasion. <laughs> And I said, dude, have you paid any that attention is, to what your own country has hilarious. been doing over the last 30 years? That is hilarious. And yeah. I've, so I've heard that a lot, actually. I've heard mm-hmm. that on a lot of mainstream um, media, you know, that, you know, uh, Russia's just this aggressor. We can't believe they're just doing this act of war and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, man, like, look in the mirror, folks. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're not the war machine here. Ukraine, Georgia, Syria. Yeah. Kazakhstan, sort of. Yeah, and I'm not saying that any of those are right or justified. Well, all I'm saying is, if you wanna if you wanna judge them based off that, you've got to judge us on the same stick. Yeah, so that's that's four military interventions that I can name just off the top of my head. There. Yeah. Obama started more than four. Yeah. Military interventions during uh, interventions during his eight years in office. Yeah. I mean, come on, like we're like in some of the same places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's absolutely insanity. Yeah, you know. Um, so that that's exactly what I thought too. I was like, you know, I can't believe that this guy is saying that you know yeah. Russia is bad because of their obvious propensity to military invention and invasion of other countries. Yeah. When the U.S. is currently involved in military interventions like all over North Africa and the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, like not to mention what we're actually doing in Ukraine. So we have now spent something like four billion dollars in taxpayer money in the last few months. Yeah, um, for uh, for weapons in Ukraine. And w- when I was talking with mom last week, um, she was saying, you know, what where are these weapons going? And yeah. I, so I started talking to some people because I haven't seen any of this, but I, I was like, I couldn't find anybody who has seen a video with all the video that's coming out of Ukraine. Oh, and there's tons, yeah. Um, that has seen a video of Ukrainians using U.S. military weapons. Like so, any of these javelins or anything that we're sending over yeah, there. Yeah, because that's what I was fixing to ask. seen a single video of what, that. What kind of weapons are we sending? I mean, I know we've sent a lot of small arms because yeah. um, that's well, usually the videos you see on the news is yeah. like pallets of like guns and crap. <laughs> um, well, now we're sending a bunch of heavy artillery as well, but uh, yeah. what... Most of what we have sent that would be considered like, I don't know, bigger than small arms yeah. um, is these uh, like shoulder fired rockets and missiles um, that are both anti-air and anti-tank uh, gotcha. versions of, of these things. Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen any video of Ukrainians using, using this, this stuff, stuff. Yeah. and I couldn't find anybody else who had. Hmm. And so, you know, like, where is it going? And when mom asked me about it... Um, she said, well, maybe it's not even getting there. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it is getting there. Yeah. Um, I said, but you got to remember that before all, before all this started, yeah. Ukraine was consistently ranked as one of the most corrupt governments in the world. Yeah. And so I suspect that it's being privatized. That yeah. it, like if if I had to guess, I would guess that these weapons are being sold off for personal profit. That the U.S. Yeah. taxpayer is spending now is spending this money to buy these weapons from U.S. companies. So this this yeah. is already privatizing the public funds. Yeah. All right. So U.S. Once. taxpayer <laughs> money is being used um, to purchase these weapons from U.S. corporations. Yeah. Uh, so they they steal the money from you. They give it to Northrop Grumman or um, you know whatever yeah. General Dynamics or whoever. Yeah. Um, and then the weapons get shipped overseas. Now I've also heard that this is being done as kind of a lend lease sort of thing. So that the money isn't actually being given to Ukraine. It's being lent Lent. to Ukraine. See, I've Um, heard this too. So go back to, uh, confessions of an economic hitman. Yeah. Um, where we're actually saddling Ukraine with a a level of debt where they're at our beck and call forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is this an, may or may not be true. Yeah, it may or may not be true. I have I can't confirm anything, mm-hmm. but but that's an interesting theory that that this is a way to keep Ukraine in our pocket. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. um so, but then I suspect that these weapons are getting to Ukraine. Yeah. They're falling into the hands of the Ukrainian oligarchs. This is actually a thing. Yeah. Um. And in fact, this was the Western-backed oligarchs that were in Russia that got kicked out by Putin. Yeah. Um, which is why Putin has been so popular in Russia is because he rescued Russia economically from yeah. the Western backed uh, oligarchs that were stealing all the, the resources out of Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union. Yeah. A lot of them went to Ukraine. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, I, I suspect that these are now falling into the hands of the Ukrainian oligarchs who are selling them off to other countries yeah. um, to privatize 
the money again yeah. um, to enrich themselves personally. And I keep thinking about uh, Dave Smith's statement that if you want to know who our next enemy is, look at who we're fighting right now or who yeah. we're funding, funding right now. Who we're funding right yeah, now. Yeah, look at who yeah. we're funding right now. And yeah. I suspect that in a year or less, we're going to be running into these weapons that we gave to Ukraine being used against Americans in Somalia or you know somewhere else. Somewhere, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's a shame, man. I mean, it's we can do better. Yes. <laughs> and we can do better by not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um I mean, that would doing nothing would be an improvement. Of course, ideally what we would have been doing is instead of trying to organize a block in opposition to one side of this conflict, if we had tried to step in and um and help negotiations between the two sides of the conflict. Yeah. And if like, we hadn't shown a like, clear bias towards one side, we could still do this, but we can't. Because, there's no way we yeah. can do that at this point. Yeah. Um, but, but it's because we closed the door on all of that so early. I mean, mm -hmm. it really was not that big of a concession for us to be like, okay, we will not put Ukraine in NATO. Right. Like that was, we weren't going to anyway. Exactly. Like, uh, it, that was not a big concession for us to make. And I go mm -hmm. back to, I think that if we had, done that that this all could have been prevented yeah. i mean there were other things standing in the way too but i think the other stuff could have got hammered out mm -hmm. i think that was the big sticking point yeah so i actually think what really did it is when ukraine said that they would go nuclear yeah i think that that was kind of the point where uh putin was like all right now we yeah. gotta do something we about can't this. have that yeah. yeah yeah um so but yeah i this this whole conflict could have been prevented um, and the U S from the very beginning has done nothing but encourage the conflict. Absolutely. And, and it, I just, I go back to, I just don't understand why, why would you want to flirt this hard with nuclear war? Yeah. And I, I wonder what, because they don't think it'll happen. Yeah, I know. And I know they that's, just don't think it'll happen, yeah. but, but that's a, that's a big gamble. It is. Yeah. Like what percentage chance would you take? <laughs> yeah. Like it would okay. So let's say that there's only a two percent chance that a nuclear war is the result of this. Yeah. Are you willing to take that chance for Ukraine? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and and I, let's see. I'll ask the our listeners personally. Would would you risk your family on a two percent chance that this ends in nuclear war? Yeah. For Ukraine. Yeah, and. And you have to ask yourself, okay, so for this two percent chance, what do I get for that? Yeah, like is it, because it's not like we're, the U.S. is getting anything out of this. Does it even matter though? It, it doesn't. They, like, yeah, because you don't take it in how, either yeah. way. How can you? How can you measure? Like, so on one side, all right, there's the possibility of whatever riches. Yeah. Uh, Ninety-eight percent of the time. Yeah. But two percent of the time, me and my entire family dies. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody I've ever known. Yeah. I I can't come up with a, a I can't come up with a reward worth that risk. Big enough for that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. Maybe those maybe there's some of you out there, maybe all of you out there are in a very different position from me in terms of, of that risk assessment. But yeah. um it I, seems I can, very clear to me. I can tell you I'm not. <laughs> like, yeah. I just I I can't I can't even fathom it. Mm. Yeah. So um yeah, this this could have been prevented. We're fighting for an incredibly corrupt government. We go on and on about how uh, Russia is authoritarian and um, Ukraine is a democracy, but Russia is at least as developed a democracy as Ukraine, and Ukraine is at least as authoritarian as Russia. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, there, there's no good guys. There's in this. no good guys in this scenario, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that we've encouraged this kind of conflict is just. Um, should I, I don't know. I guess it's just a, a moral disaster for our country. Oh yeah. Without question. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm trying to come up with some positive way of ending that, but I, 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 just, I can't do it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I can't do it. We um, always end on war, man. How do we always end on war? <laughs> because it's because it matters so much. Well, it does matter. Um, it's it's absolutely matters, and it's absolutely important. And and it's and a huge part of why our economy is in such a bad position right now. Oh, that's the truth. Um, if we weren't funding 
and a world empire, if we yeah. weren't funding conflict all over the world, yeah. we wouldn't have spent ourselves into this tremendous debt. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't have a need to just c continue printing money because this is the, this is, you know, one of those enablers for war. Yeah. Uh, historically, if you were working on some kind of hard currency, um, You'd run out of money. You run out of money. Yeah, yeah you can't <laughs> exactly. maintain it. Like you want a war to be quick because yeah. you you want you only have so much money in the coffers. Yeah. But with the modern fiat currency, what happens is is you start to run out of money in the coffers. You just print more money. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But as you print more money, you run into this situation like Putin's price hike. Yeah, yeah. Which is not Putin's price hike at all. Yeah. It's these terrible decisions by the U.S. government, and not just the Biden administration, I will say. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I was going to say. It started with Trump. Well, it, start, it started dude, way earlier than yeah, that. Yeah, I but, mean, you go back. I mean, it's it's a U.S. president problem. Yeah. Like, that's what I would call it. Yeah. And if I was campaigning against it, that's what I would say. Yeah, like, U.S. This federal is, government. This is, and then there's going to be people out there that are like, well, the Federal Reserve is a private organization. Not really. Not, yeah. I've heard that argument be Technically made. speaking, yeah, yes. You want to go by the letter of the law, but... Mm. But no, it's so embedded in government that it's essentially a government organization. I mean, the same same is true for um, Facebook and some of these other companies. Or a, a better example, especially when you're talking about foreign conflict, is like uh, the National Endowment for Democracy. Yeah. National Endowment for Democracy is technically a private organization. Yeah. But they're not a private but organization. Yeah, they don't operate. They're that the way. private arm of the U.S. intelligence's uh, regime change. Yeah, arm <laughs> exactly. You know? um, so uh, it, the answer to all these problems, though, is just to reduce the power of government. Yeah, all the way around. It's the answer to your Disney problem. It's the answer to uh, your um, CNN problem. Your media problem. Yeah. Um, it like. Government has too much control. Mm -hmm. And it's the, it's the answer to the divisiveness in this country. That's true, too. Um, because the reason this country is so divisive is because the government has so much power. And everybody's fighting for control over that power to rule mm -hmm. over the other side. Yeah. You make it so not as lucrative to rule over everybody, then you, it, the divisiveness will melt away. Yeah. Um, that's one of the one of the strong—like, so there's the libertarians that take the position that— um, that taking part in the government is itself uh, an act of aggression, an act of aggression, right? Like yeah. voting is an act of aggression. Yeah. But the other side of that argument is that it is an act of personal defense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, to, to Which prevent would, yourself from being ruled over by the other side. Yeah, and that's that's the way I would take it. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. tack I take for sure. Yeah. So. I mean, because my intention when I vote is not to impose my will on others no. is to prevent them from imposing their will on me. Yeah. Um, or anybody else for that matter. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly right. And that goes to voting for the right candidates. And earlier I had said, um, Oh, what was I? I, I just lost it. Oh no. <laughs> it was I can't the, help you. Cause I have no idea where it you're, was where you're there going. and it was gone, man. Wow. <laughs> that was, well, that sucks. <laughs> I haven't even begun to drink. <laughs> exactly. I had something and it was gone. Oh, oh. well. Well, that's a great place to end. Yeah, that's that sounds like we'll a pick, good We'll closer, pick it up right there next time. Closer outer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to try and get back on schedule. And yeah. It, may, maybe a little bonus. At the least, we'll get back on schedule next mm -hmm. week. And who knows? You may have an extra podcast show up in your thing. Yeah. You may not. <laughs> yeah. So. No promises. <laughs> yep, exactly. No promises. But uh, until next time you hear us... Um, you know, uh, like and share. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, or YouTube. Yep. Um, yeah, comment. Tell your friends how great we are and how we're telling you the news that you're not hearing elsewhere. Absolutely. And that our, our point of view is just exquisite. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Help us get this message out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll be back uh, when we're back, um, which will be... A week or less, yep. I guess. Um, or just over a week or less, because it would be yeah, Friday next Friday. week, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. Friday. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, uh, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.